Hi everyone, um, I'm Zed and I'm here today with Jake Parker. Hello. Also known as Agent 44. Yes, that's okay. an older name, but uh, <laughs> it, does, it does work. Well, you will update us on the newer one as well. And uh, Jake's here in Singapore now, uh, basically to uh, cover what it's like to be an illustrator in the industry. And uh, Jake, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you've been doing and um, you know your wise words of wisdom. Wise words of wisdom, okay. <laughs> so I've been uh, here in Singapore because LaSalle College of the Arts brought me out to do a workshop with, uh, with their students. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing a speech here tonight for the college and for the, whoever wanted to come in the industry and hear me talk. Um, so that's why I'm here. Words of wisdom. Um, about what? <laughs> I got plenty. <laughs> I'm sure you do. All right. Um, maybe just a little bit of yourself. Uh, I know you started off as Agent 44. Like you mm -hmm. said, that's a bit dated. But uh, yeah. how did that begin? Okay. So Agent 44 actually dates back to junior high. Okay. Me and my friends would like run around the neighborhood at night in dark clothing, and we pretend we were secret agents. Okay. And so my assigned name was Agent 44. Uh, and then when the internet came along, and you had to do like your forum name and mm -hmm. and sign up for email, I just Agent 44, Agent 44, that's what it was. And then something happened uh, a few years later. When I started getting published work, and I had to put my name on the published work. I couldn't put Agent 44 on it. I put Jake Parker on it. And I realized there was a disconnect with my online following mm -hmm. and the people who were you know, appreciating my work in publishing. So I decided to sort of uh, discontinue uh, the Agent 44 name and just stick with Jake Parker. Now my website's mrjakeparker.com and the reason for that is jakeparker.com was taken. <laughs> so I applied for Mr. Jake Parker and okay. here we are. So um, how did you begin? How did you get into the industry? Yeah, so I guess my first big break was um, an animation studio set up shop in my town in Arizona. Grew up in Arizona. Uh, you know, miles and miles away from LA, the LA animation scene, and uh, Don Bluth came in, him and Gary Goldman, they came in and they made a movie called Anastasia, and they started making a movie called Titan AE, and they needed artists, and I had an art teacher that said, you know, you're, you're good, Jake, you should just try and get a job there, submit your portfolio, and long story short, they hired me, dropped out of school, and started working in animation. Okay. Um, and I know you've done a lot of other stuff, but... Um was that a big break? What do you think was your big break to say that, you know, that, I'm going to be in, yeah. this is what I want to do? Yeah, so what that was, was it showed me, before then I never met a real artist who was like working as an artist, and supporting a family and a part of the community, you know. When I got a job at that studio, it was 300 people, all artists all working for a living you know it was it was amazing to me that oh an artist can actually like get a job and and have a you know own a car and, and own a house uh, so that's that was like a major mind shift and then I knew okay so an artist I can make money uh, I could support myself doing the thing I love to do and I was off and running and after that it was whole you know a whole set of other lessons that I learned over the years that just helped me refine and make me into the artist I am today. And one of the coolest things that's been on and around the industry, I would say, is Inktober. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's something that you began. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, how did you even come across, or you know, how, how, how was Inktober born? So Inktober was born because I wanted to get better at inking. And I knew my weaknesses, and that was um, if I'm not accountable to somebody, I'll just quit. I, I don't want to let people down. So what I said was, I told myself, you want to get good at inking, Jake, you got to do this every day for the next month. Uh, and so I came up with Inktober. I said, okay, I'll call it Inktober. I'll do it every day for the next month. And then I'm going to tell the internet, like, hey, join me in Inktober. It's a challenge where you draw every day for the next month. And everybody, not, it started out really small, mm -hmm. you know, a hand, 50 people maybe. But I couldn't let down those people. They, I told them I'm going to do 30 drawings or 31 drawings. And I knew I had to stick with it because I told them to do it. If I hadn't told anybody, uh, you know, I would have gotten past day three. They're like, this is too hard. I'm done. Uh, and so what happened then was when I announced it, um, a couple websites picked it up and said, hey, Inktober, the next year, I, I said, hey, we're doing it again. Uh, and then 
we're in our fifth year. This year it'll be year five or maybe it was 2009. So this is year six. Uh, last year on Instagram alone, there were half a million Inktober hashtag posts. So I don't know how big it is on Twitter and Facebook and all those, but a lot of people are doing it. Yeah, it is big, and uh, have have you been surprised by the response? Because it's become almost like, uh, you know, something that the artist community now looks forward to. Yeah. And even in Singapore, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen the posts, we've seen the tweets, we've seen the art. Mm-hmm. Um, have you been surprised by how much it's caught on? Yeah, that was a surprise. I, who knew, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and... Here's another lesson, and this is some, you know, my, my speech tonight is going to be on lessons I've learned. This is one of my lessons, is that there's power in stupid challenges you give yourself, okay? So challenge yourself, and, and something can become of it. Even if no one else picks up on it, you'll improve just from doing it. Well, you've come a long way from where you began, and... Um you know, you've done some very interesting projects, but I think one which uh, a lot of people today would very uh, easily uh, recognize would be Rocket Raccoon. Ah, uh, yeah. So you've done Rocket Raccoon yeah, with Rocket Marvel. Um, how did you stumble upon Rocket? Okay, so Rocket, that job. All right, so anytime you get a job, whether you get a job at McDonald's or you get a job drawing Rocket Raccoon, it's because of three things. Number one, you have the skill. Okay. Number two, you have some sort of connection with the person hiring you. It may not be a personal connection, but it could be that they're familiar with your work, they're familiar with what you do. You've made a connection somehow. And number three, luck. So with Rocket Raccoon, I had the ability. I, I, I had drawn graphic novels and comics before. I was very good at drawing animals and cute, mach- cute animals and like machinery and combining the two. Uh, good friend, best friend of mine, Scotty Young, has been drawing um, Rocket Raccoon. He, he, he's been working on it with Marvel, and he couldn't do it after four issues. He had to move on to something else, and he just asked, would you be interested in doing it? So that was my connection there. I had also made a connection with um, uh, the, the editor at Marvel. Um, they were a little unsure if I was going to be the right guy for it and so I drew a quick picture of Rocket sent it over and they're like okay he's the, he's the right guy and then the luck was just everything happening at the right time for me to be able to do it and uh, what was it like uh, working for a studio like Marvel I mean it's it's, it's one of the big ones and uh, I don't quite see you know a bigger studio out there right now with the movies yeah. and with the comics and everything what, what do you feel like working for Marvel um, Marvel in that capacity was really easy because they trusted me, they trusted Scotty, they trusted our colorist, the letterer, all these, they, they knew we were a team that could work well together and, and they trusted our vision. And so the only notes we got were very subtle, like just make sure, you know, you watch this, make sure this is colored a certain way. But other than that, it was like, it was fine. Looks good to us, we'll, 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 we'll print it. So working with Marvel is great. All right. Are you looking at working on any other big titles? So, as far as comics, I I had to step back because some children's books projects came through uh, that had been in the works for for years. Uh, So now I'm working on a children's book for uh, Random House and a children's book for uh, Macmillan, uh, which uh, one's my own story that I've written and I'm drawing it and the other one is I'm illustrating a book for, an, for another author so that's what's on my plate right now I when I get that done in a way I can start doing comics again so so if you had someone that you'd love, love to draw illustrate who would that be who would I love to illustrate mm-hmm. Hellboy Hellboy <laughs> yeah I think that'd be fun All right, yeah I yeah. think it'd look cool um, well You've had a chance to speak to some of the students from La Salle mm-hmm. uh, during a stay here. Uh, what do you think? Uh, how do you find the industry? Uh, how do you find things moving over here in Singapore and with the students? Yeah, these guys, I was really impressed with these students. Not only um, the, the show that they have going on right now, which is just as good as anything else happening in any other college or, or if not better. Um, I'm impressed and I feel like with that talent, and with the resources that you have in this country, like Singapore's prime for something to happen. There just needs to be that, that you know, if we go back to the three things, they've yeah. got the skills, 
they've got the connections. They just need that luck. Something to happen to break it break it out all right and so any final words of wisdom final words of wisdom i would say if you want to be an artist i guess we'll talk to we'll talk to you who want to be artists um master your craft get good at it get really good at it and try to get to know people okay uh and those two things uh will increase your chances for the luck to happen to, to get the jobs, to get the work, um, but, but work really hard, work really hard, it's hard, it's hard, so you got to work hard. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, best of luck in your presentation. Appreciate that. Thank <laughs> All you. right. Well, um, this is Jake Parker, and um, watch us in Just Saying Asia. We want animation to have a scene in Singapore, and to, because a lot of people actually don't really know the amount of work that goes behind, let's say, a three-minute animation, which is actually hand-drawn. Each frame is taken, like, you know, a few days to make.